Today we're taking a deep dive into a scale, so whether or not you understand harmony, this is going to get you from A to B with the new instrument. I'm looking at the major scale today, or sabai. I'm using a rav, but if you've got a hand pan or any other tongue pan with this layout of notes, this will apply to you too. So grab your instrument, dive in, let's get going. The first thing to do is to understand what key your instrument's in or what scale your instrument's in. Mine is D major. I can tell that by hitting the big note right in the middle, called the ding. Most handpans have the ding as their root note in their scale. There's a few that don't, but this one, D major, absolutely does. We know that our scale is D major. All we have to do is write out that list of letter names. You don't need to know music theory, you just need to know your alphabet. D, E, F, G, once we get to G, we go back around to A. A, B, C, D, etc, etc. We can write them out and write them out. For this scale, for D major, we've also got C sharps and F sharps. You don't need to know too much about that, but if you've got music theory, that'll make sense to you too. All you need to know though, is those letter names. F and C, F sharp, C sharp, whatever. We write them out, one after another. We can also number them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> so we write them out with our letter names, or we can transform them into numbers, and they're the degrees of the scale. So now, when I say first degree, third degree, fifth degree, for me, that's D, F, and A. For you, with your scale that you've written out, for your instrument, you might have an F as the first note, you might have a G as the first note, you might have any other note. So I'm going to be talking degrees, you're going to be working it out with your instrument. When we look at a piano, they're all laid out right to left, you've got every single note available. But of course, hand pans and tongue pans only have a limited selection of notes. I don't have all the pitches to chew from, I've only got nine, so I couldn't have a full chromatic scale. And these notes are carefully selected to sound good together and be easy to play. So let's figure out what we can do, how we can get to know our instrument. The scale that this instrument is based on is a major scale. Those are the range of notes that could be chosen to be put onto this instrument, but the way that it's arranged is even more interesting. We'd expect the next note after our D to be the next note in sequence, and that's just the same as an alphabet. Our D would be E, but we've got a gap. The next note for us is a big step up to a G. We missed out quite a few steps there. Now, though, we're walking up in sequence. After our G, got our A. After our A, B. After our B, got our C sharp. Next up, D. And now we're starting to have notes repeated. So even though we've already got our low D, we've also got a higher D. E, F sharp, and our last little jump gives us two A's rather than the G that we'd expect if we were going step by step. So they're the notes that you've got on your instrument. <laughs> the first thing to practice is just walking up and down, really getting to know the sound. You'll notice that we go hand to hand, left hand, then right hand, then left hand, then right hand, etc. So let's talk about some chords. Triads or chords are just stringing together those notes, layering them on top of each other to get more complex sounds, and it's what forms the basis of harmony. This is your home, this is your tonic chord. You're going to be spending a lot of time there, so let's get to know it. To play D major, we need our D, our F sharp, and our A. First, third, fifth. So we find all of our Ds on our instrument. Find all of our A's on our instrument. And all of our F sharps, just the one. Chord one sounds like this. This one, play one of E, we get E minor, so we're looking for an E, a G, and a B. So this is your minor second chord. We 
Next up, we've got our third chord. So this is F sharp. For this one, we need an F sharp, an A, and a C sharp. Now we've got to the fourth chord. Chord four is a really important one in music, so it's really useful to learn this one, which is going to be G. So we need to find our Gs, find our Bs, and find our Ds. Do it out, of course. Chord five, that is another really important chord. Our fifth chord is A. <laughs> so we need an A. We need a C sharp. Seventh chord available to us, C sharp, E, and a G. This is a diminished chord, it sounds pretty unstable, we don't use it loads. You don't need to understand harmony to use your ears and figure out we've got some basic groups. The major chords are your first chord. fourth chord, G. And your fifth chord, A. They sound cheerful, major, very complete. We've also got some minor chords in there, so chord two, E. It sounds sad, and that's because of our... it just does. We've also got chord three, F sharp. Chord six, minor, we use this chord a lot. And finally we have the seventh chord, a diminished chord. That is the least stable of the lot, we don't use that too much. So that is our list of chords, let's get used to playing them all. The instrument is normally laid out in a way that follows these notes I said. So these chords fall onto your hands really easily. First chord. First chord sits easily. Fourth chord sits easily. So this five chord is great. We use it a lot. And you can also add, make it a five seven. So if you add in your fourth degree of the scale, it sounds like it's ready to resolve. So it adds that tension and release. Some of them are a little bit further apart. serve you on any instrument. So any other D major, I could pick up a G major, an F major made by Rav, made by a hand pan maker, and I would know this shape of chords because they're all laid out in the same way. So it's really worth practicing them. Let's go through. Chord one. gonna take them down, we're gonna do one, we're gonna do six, we're gonna do four, 
and then we're gonna do five. This is a progression that will serve you really well. We've got loads of pop songs written in this. One. sense of movement. Uh, it's not just loads of random notes, but we don't just have to play them at the same time. We can do that exact same chord progression, but in motion. to really learn the nuts and bolts of your instrument that you can then string them together in any way you like. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be doing more of these deep dives into a scale, so let me know which scale you'd like me to tackle next. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you're useful, and tune in for a new video next week.